I started working in the packaging area at Petaluma back in the early 90s, the beginning of the 1990s while I was studying philosophy at um, university and uh, when I finished my philosophy degree I continued working in the cellars at Petaluma and that's where I really gained a lot more interest in, in what I was doing. From there I studied um, winemaking at Charles Sturt University and began to um, work at other wineries and started to travel overseas and so but um, really it was Petaluma where the the interest was sparked with the the, in, the uh, fascination with the process and the and the, um, the the thrill of tasting the wines as well that came out from such a prestigious cellar. Uh, a lot of the uh, lot of the wineries in South America had adopted um, techniques from the French, for, um, so we learned a lot about sort of the, how they go about doing things and how they influenced uh, the fruit there and the wines that come out of that region. Seeing so many different varieties and seeing so many different um, uh, production facilities, co cooperative wineries in France and big wineries in South America as well as small boutique places and domains in, in France. Um, I think one thing that I really took from the whole process is that, that uh, winemaking is a very personal um, endeavour and also it's, um, uh, it's a, as driven by the vineyard and the fruit and uh, the culture of the place as it is by technical matters. Simon came to me where, with the opportunity from Wine Society and asked if I'd like to be involved and, and then grow fruit to his specification for the project. And um, I was really, really thoroughly excited. Uh, yeah, Wine Society is a great company to work with. Two thousand and fifteen for us was one of the best vintages we've seen in a long time. It mm, really was great vintage, um, and uh, it was really characterised by we had a rain-free period during harvest, and then about a month before harvest we had one or two heat spikes, but they weren't really heat waves. We had one or two days of hot weather, which just brought the fruit on that little bit and just gave us some lifted characters. But two thousand and fifteen in our region will go down as one of the best. Mm. So we look at different parts of the vineyard for the blend of this Sauvignon Blanc. Um, there's a lower lying areas as well as higher areas and they do ripen at different levels and to develop a, a complex palette and aroma in the wine we look at different flavour profiles in different parts of the, of the fruit in the vineyard. So um, there's a really nice low lying area which is very aromatic and is a bit lower, slower ripening. That gets picked when it, it's right. And then there's higher areas which ripen earlier. Um, and so we, we look at these things that way. Um, again, it's all about tasting fruit in the vineyard and deciding when that particular parcel or area in the vineyard is ready to go. And, and then Randall jumps on it the very next, the very next morning at uh, one o'clock in the morning and gets it off the vines and gets it down the winery That's ASAP. Right. Uh, yeah, when Simon first brought the project to us, uh, uh, Neil actually came over and inspected the vineyards. Uh, so we selected some of our best blocks and, and then we had, we had three different blocks which went into it. And um, uh, from there, uh, Simon got the wine into tank it's important that we have a nice clear juice to ferment. It's important that the fruit is processed at a very cool temperature and it's important that, um, that we look for good profiles in terms of acidity and flavour so that um, when the wines are blended they're nice and clean but they have individual expression that we, we can blend together to, to get the best result in, in the end. And we had um, Ian McKenzie and uh, Neil Haywood come down on, right. on two different occasions, actually. Yes. And they guided the style. That's uh, right. Yeah, um, the Wine Society is really lucky to have Ian McKenzie. He, like the man, is a legend. Mm -hmm. And uh, he really knows his stuff. The first thing we look at is the nose. And 
right off the bat, you know there's um, the typical Adelaide Hills cool climate character. There's kiwi fruit, grassy notes, beautiful lime and lemon citrus. Um, so it's a really appealing nose, but uh, again, everything clean and pure and fresh. And then the palette is, um, there's no, there's nothing edgy. Everything's nice and smooth and clean and crisp. And so it's a bit like grabbing a really nice fresh piece of fruit and biting into it and getting that refreshing character. Um, um, and yeah. one of the things Simon does best, I must say, you know, with our own wines as well, is that um, you know, he makes a nice, even full palate. The palate lifts slowly and then crescendos over the top. There's no bumps in the middle, there's nothing harsh. But for me, it's the roundness of the palate. Mm. You know, the palate really is lovely. And mm. you know, the wine really speaks, speaks volumes about quality. I think it's been a great collaboration where everyone's really tried to do the absolute best job they mm. could. And um, that shows eventually in the wine. Yeah, I look forward to scoring the wine. It's going to do well. I love matching food with Sauvignon Blanc, and for me, it's kingfish carpaccio. I just love that fresh, uh, white flesh fish. And yeah, kingfish carpaccio, a little bit of finger lime, uh, would just set it off absolutely beautifully. For me, I think you could have this with a, uh, a nice citrus tart plenty of acidity and sweetness which would uh, then bounce off this wine beautifully. Sauvignon Blanc for dessert, beautiful summer's day, what could be better? Mm. What really impressed me the most was was the interactiveness uh, you know, with, with, with Neil and Ian McKenzie. Uh, you know, they really cared about the wine, they wanted to be involved. Mm. Um, you know, we've been doing stuff with the Wine Society for a few years now and it's it's like an extended family, so uh, uh, I'm a proud member and as is my father, so uh, to the Wine Society. Cloud Break is about being out in the vineyard in the cool climate of the Adelaide Hills, feeling the clouds part and feeling the sun come down and greet you in the middle of winter when you feel like heading back into the car instead of getting out and getting your snips out and, and getting into some pruning. Thanks for watching this video. It means a lot to us here at the Wine Society. If you'd like to stay close and keep up to date on all things wine, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking on the button in the wine glass or the red button down below the video. We'd love to share more with you.